Namaste to all. It was extremely wonderful and peaceful atmosphere, a very serene, calm atmosphere yesterday where my Acharya Ji was giving beautiful knowledge in the Yajna of Samadhi Divas. My Acharya Ji attained the Samadhi on 19th March 1979 and yesterday was 19th March so there was a very special Yajna where my Acharya Ji gave beautiful knowledge from Vedas and Yoga Sutras. And my Acharya Ji was telling that even I was totally amazed on the day of 19th march 1979 when this stage happened to me i was indulged all along in intense tapasya for several years and thereby the result of those tapasya was awarded by almighty god on 19th march 1979 and samadhi is the highest stage of realization and it is such a blissful place to be for a jivatma to attain samadhi and macha ji was telling that many of you have been praying for your acharyas long life and in fact it is a vedic kartavya karma of a disciple to pray for acharya ji's long life because when acharya is not there you won't be able to listen vedas anymore vedas are not books vedas emanate from inside the samadhisti yogi's heart and then it it is revealed when he speaks so you must all pray for acharya ji's long life and god always listen to prayers of pure disciples Uh, and because you know when there is no acharya in the earth then there won't be any vedas but the vedas will never get destroyed vedas will be as it is and in the next universe again the vedas knowledge will emanate from almighty god vedas can never be destroyed even if there is uh, no but no one in this world who is speaking vedas then also vedas is extremely safe and secure inside almighty god but almighty god says in the vedas that vedas knowledge cannot be told by me because i am formless i don't have mouth i always inspire yogis to give the knowledge of vedas who has realized me in samadhi and god says in ajur uh, in rigveda that i give the knowledge of vedas only once at the start of the universe after that you this knowledge is always listened from dhir purush from samadhist yogis and from that time onwards until till date each and every time a samadhist yogi always reveals the knowledge of the vedas so it is a very good deed for you to uh, pray for acharya ji's long life my acharya was telling and my acharya was telling that uh, as per vedic dharma and as per my personal feeling you must uh, all make your you know sons and daughters to study more but i personally feel that daughters should be made to study further more my acharya was telling that uh, the time is ticking every second is moving time will just like that move and then everything will be over one day so try to utilize the time anyway the time is getting wasted don't allow the time to get wasted try to utilize each, each and every moment of your time in shubh karma in tapasya and in grihastha ashrama try to do every day morning and evening tapasya agni hotra ishwar uh, ishwar neem jap etc and uh, my acharya was telling janam mrityu jara vyadi dukh dosha anudarshanam that means are you not again and again feeling this knowledge of shri krishna where shri krishna is giving this knowledge that Ar- arjun this birth and death and old age and diseases are dukh they are dosh why you are not seeing dosh in them why you are not seeing dukh in them so this is the same knowledge which we must all try to understand that we must try to get rid of this dukh and to get rid of this dukh there is only one path and that is the vedic path and everybody must try to realize that almighty god and attain moksha for that you must all try to do sadhana and you must come to ashram ashram means a place where an acharya lives and shram means purusharath shram means extremely extreme hard work a means from all the sides so come to the place of acharya from all the sides of this universe and then go to that acharya's place and try to do hard work there don't sit and waste your time in ashram try to do seva to acharya try to do the seva that is available in the ashram don't try to sleep on the day in the day time it will spoil your life and macha was telling that when you donate anything to acharya that donation is accepted by almighty god if the acharya accepts it and the donation for example you are donating money to this ashram and your money is used for doing yagna your money is used for giving food to people who are coming here your money is used for 
giving free boarding and lodging for people who are coming here but this money is actually not your money it is already given to acharya so this money belongs to acharya and almighty god but whatever is there with almighty god is already given to you all naturally so my acharya was telling that even you come to ashram it is your ashram it is the residing place of a yogi so you everything here belongs to you and everything here belongs to almighty god but try to utilize it properly don't waste time don't try to spend time in alasi alasya my acharya was telling and my acharya was telling that when you come here don't expect or don't come for tasty food of course the food here is extremely tasty the water here is extremely tasty but when i was doing tapasya i have always eaten rotten rotis that means when i was searching many gurus i used to stay, go to such gurus where they will feed me roti which was 7 to 8 days old roti it will be so hard it will be like rubber to bite but still you know i used to eat that roti because i my interest was not in roti and chawal and dal and chapati my interest was in almighty god and they used to give me feed me the sabji made of grass my acharya was telling that the sabji made of the grass was grass is made as a dish and then served to them my acharya and they used to say see our guruji walks in this grass every day in the morning right so i have taken the grass and giving you the sabji so even that sabji i have eaten i have never went to any guruji for you know the facilities available in the ashram for the food in the ashram i always went for brahma gyan and whenever i see that you know these gurus are hopeless then i have moved on and finally i met my acharya uh, in the rishikesh jungle my acharya was telling and my acharya was singing so many bhajans yesterday at least two and a half hours he sang bhajans yesterday because my acharya was feeling that uh, today my antaratma is telling to sing bhajans so my acharya was uh, playing a harmonium after several years i saw my acharya playing so many bhajans with the harmonium and then as beautiful bhajans where my acharya was giving extreme intense knowledge in each and every bhajan for example there was one bhajan he was singing of meera bhai where meera bhai is saying that kanak katore amrit bhariya where I, if you remember i made the last shloka of uh, in the last three shlokas there is a beautiful shloka hiranmayena patrena satyasya pihitam there is a golden vessel and inside the golden vessel there is amrit there is almighty god there is the name of almighty god so meera is telling that inside your body is the name of almighty god try to do the job of almighty god he is amrit and uh, so don't waste your time do the name job diksha diksha is not attained easily and when somebody gets diksha he his life takes a turning point and then once somebody gets diksha he or she becomes takes the second birth and then the meera Uh, meera bai was uh, singing a beautiful bhajan payo ji maine naam ratan dhan payo naam ratan is diksha when you get the name of almighty god from the vedas through a samadhist purush that is diksha and then by by uh, doing name jap of that diksha mantra we can achieve huge heights towards samadhi and my acharya was telling that it is the order of almighty god in the vedas that you must go to a yogi and when you don't go to yogi when you don't serve them when you don't make them pleased with your services then what is the use of your human body there is no use of your human body your human body itself is used useless it is made only for the purpose of serving acharya for the purpose of doing sadhana for the purpose of doing agni utra tapasya if you are not having uh, these facilities in with you that you are not doing tapasya etc then your body is waste your body is useless and uh, my acharya was also telling one more secret that if you are not if you have not even seen a guru in your life the real guru who has attained the samadhi then there is no value of your human life you must all strive extremely hard to have darshans of guru ji my acharya was telling and my acharya tell, told that if you even if you stay in corner of the world whenever you find time travel to that acharya see that acharya try to get knowledge from that acharya because that acharya will not speak anything other than the vedic knowledge he will not speak anything other than the brahma gyan he will not 
speak anything other than the almighty god that is the you know acharya because he has attained samadhi he has realized that almighty god and when you contact that acharya even your grahastha ashram will become so much blissful that your uh, life will take a turning point your uh, the house will become so peaceful with the vedic knowledge if both the husband and wife and the children starts following adopting vedas in life and my acharya was telling that jo aage teri rachna kuch bhi nahi hai this this rachna is nothing in front of that almighty god this creation is 13.8 billion years wide big, big big huge black holes huge sun moon earth etc not th- these are nothing in front of that almighty god one by one crorth of his power acts on prakriti and creates this universe vast universe so we cannot imagine the power of almighty god by seeing the universe he is beyond description my acharya was telling and uh, my acharya told that when somebody takes diksha kaam krodh mad lob ahankar these five thieves which are hiding within us they will slowly slowly walk away from us the, the bhajan my acharya was explaining like you know there is a sandalwood tree and in the sandalwood tree there will be lot of snakes but what happens is a, a peacock will come and sit on the top of the tree by seeing the peacock each and every snake will silently move out of the tree similarly when you have your acharya and his name on your head all your kaam krodh mad lob ahankar will move out of you it will slowly slowly vanish from you so doing name jap if you have not attained diksha my acharya told you must do om jap after diksha you must do the diksha mantra jap every day you must do tapasya so that you can overcome this kaam krodh mad lob ahankar and my acharya was singing another song birhan mandir that this almighty god is jyoti swarup and his temple is your human body almighty god of course he is omnipresent but he cannot be seen outside with your eyes open he is always realized in samadhi when you have your closed eyes because he is he is inside you and he manifests inside the jivatma inside the human body and uh, this samsara this this universe is a very very intense depth sea and to cross this sea you must have the boat and that boat is there only with acharya so you must have contact with that acharya who will take who will, cr- who will take you through the samsara and then he will cross it over to the moksha stage so that is why every rishi muni they have their gurus without acharya without guru you can never attain samadhi my acharya was telling and my acharya was telling that i have got so much of bliss my uh, almighty god has given me everything but i have never enjoyed any of the sukh the materialistic sukh in my life even though i have everything with me even now also but i always i am locked inside my four walls because i my eyes are closed and i am always in bliss of that samadhi because once you taste the bliss of almighty god you don't need anything else although i have everything i have everything with me but i do not have any desire to you know enjoy the materialistic uh, things anymore that is the power of samadhi and uh, when you do complete faith when you have complete faith on that almighty god and when you do every every day tapasya then you will enter into devi yoni then you will enter into that human body where you will have unbreakable contact with a yogi all the time and uh, my acharya was telling that i have been to bihar and bihar uh, there are so many sishyas uh, of me in bihar and then when i went to bihar i really saw the kind people there they are they were poor people but they had everything for their acharya even though they were extremely poor they had they had their total love and affection towards acharya so i i really love the sangat and the people from bihar they are farmers most many people were poor people at that point of time now everybody is rich but still they are down to earth extremely wonderful people my acharya was telling and my acharya was telling that when the acharya is happy about a disciple then almighty god is extremely happy when the acharya is unhappy with a disciple then almighty god also is unhappy with that person my acharya was telling and uh, sadhana the marg of sadhana the path of sadhana is not easy 
my acharya was telling that it is as if as if like eating sand can you eat sand it's not easy to eat sand similarly doing everyday sadhana is not easy that's why the world is not doing sadhana because who will eat sand when every indri pleasure is available to human beings why somebody will do tapasya why somebody will do sadhana my acharya was telling and uh, when uh, even you know my acharya told that there is no death for a yogi a yogi can leave the body even if i think i can leave my body in just in the immediate second immediate moment i can leave my body but there is no death for me i have attained to i have come to that stage i am beyond death and birth so leaving the body is one thing but still i will remain in my bliss and uh, i will try to show path to my true disciples my acharya was telling and even if after uh, you know i am not there i expect my disciples to adopt the vedic path come to ashram and do a havan and uh, do havan every day at the home agnihotra etc my acharya was telling and never ever have the smallest of the smallest of the smallest doubt on a yogi who is a samadhist yogi my acharya was telling and my acharya was explaining a yoga sutra i don't i don't remember the i mean he did not mention the number friends but it is a beautiful yoga sutra when a yogi attains a samadhi the rajaguna tamaguna satguna prakriti <clears throat> it acts as if it thanks to the yogi I mean, of course it is jad it's a, it's a alankar it's a it's a kind of example patanjali muni has written that the rajagun tamagun satagun they will completely stop their activities towards the yogi they in fact tell to the yogi that you know i have been ordered by almighty god to make you a yogi and now you have become a yogi so my activities towards you is fully complete and my activities towards normal human beings i will continue they are bhogyonis you are a yogi so you will so my acharya was telling that at that stage a yogi will actually kill his mind there is no mind for a yogi there is no buddhi for a yogi there is no chitta for a yogi a yogi is in samadhi he works with this divine mind divine intellect which is not available with the common human beings because the human mind which you people have they are made of rajagun tamagun satagun the mind of the yogi is not made from rajagun tamagun satagun it is alaukik it is divine so it is swabhavik my acharya was telling so it has the property of extremely divine by by doing intense tapasya everybody must come to this stage where the prakriti will stop its actions on the yogi the prakriti will do all the help towards the yogi like uh, a yogi need not go and beg for food he will get the food a yogi need not go and ask for money for running the ashram everything will be done by taken care by prakriti because prakriti is controlled by almighty god my acharya was telling it was a very very beautiful sutra and the first time i am hearing this sutra from my acharya's mouth and it was extremely wonderful when my acharya explained in hindi it was like uh, we were all sitting outside this universe outside the galaxy and listening it uh, from almighty god himself it was extremely serene atmosphere yesterday after the yajna when my acharya was explaining this uh, sutras and uh, my acharya is telling that do not waste time please utilize your time because when you utilize your time definitely one point of time you will realize almighty god and uh, uh, that is why you must always utilize your time in shubh karma every deed you are doing for your family as per vedas is okay and other than that try to do only veda vedic sadhana do swadhyay do agnihotra do as many ahutis as possible when you find time but don't waste your time and when you have your facilities at your home when you have money when you have property wealth always remember tena tyaktena bunjita this is not yours this is given to you for a temporary point of time based on your own karma so try to have complete detachment and try to dedicate all these things to acharya your mind and atma and your intellect has to be fixed on the acharya and you can do your office work you can you can do your business work you can do all your other activities but keep your mind and intellect in acharya and uh, then what happens is your sadhana will start giving results to you so these are some of the knowledge i my acharya gave a, like four hours knowledge but you know some of the main points i try to note 
and wanted to summarize to you thank you so much namaste om